today we're going to be completing page 17. I'm going to do a couple of the problems, pretty much just one example of each type. Feel free to copy all of this directly onto your paper and then use it as examples to help you with the problems that I don't show. All right, the first thing that we're going to review is place value. So we have um, the tens place, ones place on the left of the decimal, and then to the right we have tenths, hundredths and thousandths. So when you are taking a decimal and rewriting it as a fraction, you're going to look for the place value where um, the last digit falls. So this three is in um, two places after the decimal. That's going to be your hundredths place. So all that means is you're going to take 23 and write it out of 100. So the correct math way to say that decimal is 0 and 23 hundredths. And then for the fraction, you would just say 23 hundredths. Okay, next type of problem that we're going to review is turning fractions into decimals. Um, if the denominator is not a multiple of 10, so for example, um, on number four we have 1 eighth, then you're going to use long division to turn that into a decimal. So um, 1 eighth is really 1 divided by 8, so I'm going to put 1 in the division box, 8 on the outside, and then do long division. So 8 is bigger than 1. I'm going to put a 0 as a placeholder since 8 can't go into 1. And then I'm going to turn this 1 into 1 and 0 tenths. So now 8 can go into 10. If I look at it like 10, I'm really doing 2 tenths um, or 1 tenth. But 8 can go into 10 one time. I'll bring down the 8 underneath that 1. And then 10 minus 8 is 2. And I'm going to keep adding zeros and bringing those down and continue dividing until one of two things happens. Either it ends and I get a terminating decimal or I see a pattern and I can see that it's a repeating decimal. So 8 goes into 20 two times. 2 times 8 is 16. We'll subtract. 20 minus 16 is 4. Bring down another 0 and 8 goes into 40 exactly five times. So when I subtract, I get zero, and then I know that I'm done. So my final answer would be zero and 125 thousandths. That's equal to one eighth right up here. Okay, so for the next two, set it up the same way. Top number goes inside the division box, bottom number goes on the outside, and you're going to just do long division. All right, 7 and 8 are very, very similar to the ones we just did. They're just written in a word problem, so I'm not going to do those. Um, just look at what we did on numbers 1 and 4 to help you with 7 and 8. Okay, um, second set of skills that we're going to review would be fraction operations. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. For um, adding and subtracting fractions, you need common denominators. So when I look at number 9, I see denominators of 3 and 6. 3 and 6 can both multiply into 6, so I'm going to use 6 as my common denominator. The second fraction is already out of 6, so I'm not going to do anything to change 1 sixth. It's just going to stay. The first fraction um, was out of 3, so what I'm going to do is figure out what I multiplied 3 by to get to 6. That would be 2, so I did times 2. And so I'm going to do 1 times 2, same exact thing, to get my top number. So I now have common denominators, and the first fraction was rewritten as 2 sixths. So I will add 2 sixths plus 1 sixth by adding directly across the numerators. 2 plus 1 is 3. Denominators were already the same. They're going to stay the same. And so I get an answer of 3 sixths. The last thing we're going to do is simplify that fraction. And if I divide both the top and the bottom by the same number, since 3 goes into both of those, I get the fraction 1 half. Okay, so for adding and subtracting, you'll get common denominators, and then either just add or subtract across the top and keep the denominators the same. Okay, 
Um, last skills that we're going to look at are multiplication and division. So for number 12, multiplying fractions, I would say, is probably the easiest operation to do with fractions. I'm going to rewrite it just a little bit bigger here. Two-thirds times nine-tenths. So really, all you have to do is just multiply straight across the top, multiply straight across the bottom, and then simplify that fraction. So I could divide both 18 and 30 by 6 to get 3 fifths as my final answer. Okay, if you want to use a shortcut, you can actually simplify some of those numbers before you multiply straight across. So if the way that I showed you makes sense and you're good, just use that. It will require you to simplify at the end. If you are uh, ready to see kind of a shortcut, then we can look at um, 2 and 10. I'm going diagonal because um, those have a common factor of 2. I can divide both of those by 2 and it would become 1 fifth. Okay, this only works for multiplying. And then I could simplify um, the 9 and the 3 by dividing both of those by 3. And then lastly, 1 times 3 is 3, and 1 times 5 is 5. So again, only use the shortcut if you're super comfortable with what I did in blue. Um, if you're ready for the shortcut, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, final fraction operation that we're going to review is division. So I have the fraction 1 tenth, the number 14, and I'm dividing that by 3 fifths. So to divide fractions, you are going to keep the first fraction the same. You are going to change division into multiplication, and then you are going to use the reciprocal of the second fraction. I'm going to write that here in green reciprocal, okay, and reciprocal just means that you are flipping the fraction. So instead of three-fifths, we're going to rewrite it as five-thirds, okay, and then if you want to use your shortcut and simplify first, go for it. Otherwise, one times five is five, ten times three is thirty, and then I can divide both of those by five, so five divided by five is one, 30 divided by 5 is 6. So I'd get 1 sixth as my answer to number 14. Okay, so a quick review on all of our fraction, fraction decimal um, conversions and then our fraction operations. Um, now go ahead and go back and complete all the ones that I skipped.